Created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko in 1962, Spider-Man made his debut in the final issue of the Amazing Fantasy Anthology series, where he became a sensation. By March of 1963, the character was granted a solo comic run in the form of The Amazing Spider-Man, which would become Marvel's best-selling comic. Although there were three made-for-television adaptations released toward the end of the 1970s, including an amazing Japanese film, which we have to cover at some stage. Considering the character's success, it might seem odd that people waited so long to bring the character to the big screen, but in the background were large creative disagreements and legal chaos that put the project in a state of production hell. By the 90s, the rights were scattered across multiple companies, including Coralco Pictures, who hired James Cameron down the project. With Leonardo DiCaprio in mind as the lead, Cameron's script was darker, featured Electro and Sandman as villains, and even a steamy love scene between Mary Jane and Peter Parker. However, the project was halted when Peralco was sued by the previous rights owner. This legal dispute was just the beginning, and in the following years, MGM, Sony Pictures, Viacom, and Marvel would enter the ring. Sony would ultimately win by trading the rights for the James Bond film Casino Royale to MGM, and decided to use Cameron's treatment as the foundation. Despite using his material, they didn't want Cameron to direct, and would hire screenwriter David Coop to rework his script. His first draft, completed in August of 1999, was, for all intents and purposes, a toned-down version of Cameron's story. Sam grew up having Spider-Man painted on the wall in his room, which is the best kind of a man to take the helm for a movie like that. Spider-Man had a real personality, and the Spider-Man comic books were more about how these superpowers affected his real life. In January of 2000, Raimi signed on to direct and screenwriter Scott Rosenberg was brought on to finalize the script. Known for his Evil Dead series, Raimi was an avid comic book reader, a major fan of Spider-Man, and in 1987 had even co-written a live-action comic called Crime Wave with his housemates the Coen brothers. He also tried to get an adaptation of The Shadow off the ground, but after struggling to obtain the rights, chose to create his own superhero with 1990s Dark Man, making him perfect for Spider-Man. Interestingly, one key element of Cameron's original treatment that isn't in the comics and was kept from the film is Spider-Man's ability to produce web in his body. Whoa! That came out of you. Yeah, you can't do that, huh? No. How on earth does that even... Anyway, we're getting sidetracked, look. Kirsten Dunst would be the first to secure MJ, and many actors were considered for the role of Peter Parker, including Heath Ledger and James Franco, but Raimi fought for Tobey Maguire and got his pick. Maguire, despite being 27 at the time, does a decent job of portraying the nerdy, wide-eyed teenager with a heart of gold. Tobey Maguire was so powerful in his performance as Peter Parker. You could see that he was a sensitive individual, and I knew that there was a lot there that we needed for this particular character of Spider-Man. Franco would of course ultimately play Harry, and though Jim Carrey and Nicolas Cage were considered for Norman Osborn, thankfully Willem Dafoe was cast, who gives the Green Goblin a blend of humanity and menace that perfectly embodies Osborn's Jekyll and Hyde inclinations. We can destroy him. I can't. Make him wish he were dead. Yes. And then grant his wish. With a $17 million budget that would be pushed to 100, principal photography began on January 8, 2001 at Sony Picture Studios in California. The Pacific Electricity Building was used for the Daily Bugle offices, while the Los Angeles National History Museum served as the Columbia University Science Department. I didn't feel it was proper to have a super stylized world like you see in a lot of comic book films. I felt that the most important thing to do was to create a real world. After filming for an additional two weeks in New York City, production wrapped up on June 30th, 2001, but many scenes were reshot and sequences were edited to remove the World Trade Centers following the September attacks. There's so many elements that were designed from the ground up to create an action sequence, um, an aerial dogfight battle over Times Square. You don't see that every day. Special effects were overseen by visual effects supervisor John DeCistro, who somehow convinced Raimi to use CGI for most of the stunts, as it was much safer than the practical stunts he was accustomed to. A lesson that the creators of the infamous Spider-Man musical would learn the hard way. Any better this morning? Any change? Change? Yeah. 
Big change. Living in Queens with his uncle Ben and Aunt May, Maguire's Peter Parker struggles to fit in at school, finding solace in photography and his only friend, Harry Osborne, son of genius scientist and founder of Oscorp, Norman Osborne. All things considered, he lives a pretty standard and carefree teenage existence. That is until his life is turned upside down when he's bitten by a genetically engineered super spider that rewrites his DNA, granting him superpowers including perfect vision, super strength, speed, reflexes, and the ability to stick to walls and shoot webbing. Meanwhile, at Oscorp, Norman labors away on a government contract to create enhanced soldiers. Worried that his company would lose funding to his competitor, he decides to test the serum on himself, and disaster ensues. Back to formula. In a not-so-subtle metaphor for puberty, over the next few days, Peter acquaints himself with his changing body and evolving powers. As a teenager, not realizing the scope of his gift, he does some silly things, including trying to impress MJ with a fancy new car he wants to buy with proceeds from an underground wrestling match. Yeah, he's not a hero just yet, and this is something the movie reinforces. Dismissing Uncle Ben when he tries to impart some wisdom. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Peter manages to defeat his opponent in a brutal cage match, but is scammed out of his winnings by the organizer. When his scammer is then robbed at gunpoint and Peter lets the criminal escape, the thief then kills Uncle Ben and steals his car, which consumes Peter with anger and shame. From this point, in spite of the massive weight of this responsibility, Parker continues to make the hard choice at great cost to his own happiness. His agility, strength, and speed are the result of the freaky spider bite, and his powers are cool, but it's his tenacity, grit, and sacrifice that ultimately turn him into a hero. On the opposite side, Osborne, now donning his goblin suit and glider, joyfully kills everyone trying to destroy his company and his name, putting him at odds with Parker. Impressive! Before long, Spider-Man becomes the talk of the town, drawing equal praise and criticism, and there's no greater critic than the editor-in-chief of the Daily Bugle, J. Jonah Jameson, who is convinced that he's a menace to society. Who is Spider-Man? He's a criminal, that's who he is. A vigilante. A public menace. In a performance by J.K. Simmons that is so good, Sony keeps bringing him back. To earn some cash, Peter begins working for the Bugle as a freelance photographer, supplying Jonah with Spider-Man photos while contending with a severe breach of the bro code when Franco goes method. You think I'm pretty? I think you're beautiful. Things reach boiling point during a tense dinner in Aunt May's where Norman notices a fresh wound on Peter's arm and deduces that he's Spider-Man. Goading Parker, he attacks those closest to him, forcing Peter to confront Norman in a brutal fight that ends with the latter's death and Harry swearing revenge on Spider-Man. By the end, he loses two great father figures, his best friend is against him, and yet he still chooses to embrace his new role at great cost to his happiness. With an exceptional story, rich themes, superb direction, and terrific performances from the ensemble cast, Raimi's Spider-Man is the quintessential superhero movie. But I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, if you have any other suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.